Hey, what is going on, YouTube? Hey, hey, Ron here. We are back, ladies and gentlemen, and we are in the Piotr Bagration. Da, comrade, yes. The most underrated cruiser at Tier 7, in my opinion, of course. I remember when I posted my Lion video, some people were like, it's just rare. It's not underrated. And I'm like, no, the Lion is fairly underrated. Um, the Lenin is, is rare, but it is not underrated. So that is a, a good example. So if you mix that up, make sure to pay attention. But uh, here we have the pee bag. And we are running Nikolai Kuznetsov on her. I'll throw the commander up on the screen here. We're running more of a DPM full fire build. I don't really recommend full AP or full fire builds um, normally, but with you know with with this build and and, and just the ship attributes, it, it really excels. Your job in cruisers is DPM. Um, on top of that, it is radar, and this thing has an 11.7 radar. Uh, you can also tank damage, and some people take that too far. Um, now, certain cruisers are more meant to do that, the Petropavlovsk, the Napoli, um, you know, certain other cruisers with, with strong belts. I guess the Drake can do it, but uh, it's, it's not a ship I would, I would recommend for, for many people. I just, I don't like the Drake. But uh, anyway, we are getting in this defensive position here, and what this position allows us to do is to tank damage, to keep our radar in range, and to utilize all of our guns, right? Also, instead of bowing in, Usually you have better kiting angles, uh, so you can get all guns on target, and you can accelerate out of the, uh, you know, situation if need be. Now the P-Bag actually does suffer a little bit with her kiting angles. They are not the best. You can still manage them, but here you can see this is the position I want to be in, but we can only get two guns on target. So you have to open up a touch more angle. Uh, against, you know, Tier 7 battleships, you and Tier 6 especially, you, you should be fine. Against Tier 7, or, you know, some of the other Tier 7s and Tier 8s, you, you might suffer a bit um, with that, you know, those penetration angles. But, but here's a, a decent example of that. Uh, because of our angle, the dispersion kind of put those shells everywhere, and it's a Bismarck, so German battleships, yay. But what we're doing right now is basically just DPMing this Bismarck. On top of that, we're paying attention to the spawns. There is one destroyer in this game, and every single ship except for that destroyer has been spotted. So what does that tell us? That tells us that this destroyer spawned on our flank. On top of that, our team decided to overload the seaside for some reason. I played th four games this morning. Now, three of them were wins, but in the one loss, we had a Lepento abandon the flank, and I actually sent him a message. I just said, hey, man, staying on your side is a better strategy. That's not hate mail. It's just a quick little recommendation. Now, sending out those messages every day is, is not going to net you. You know, it, it's just you're going to go insane, but... It was just so frustrating because he could have helped our team out so tremendously. So if I do have one message for you guys again, play the side you spawn on. Now, there are certain maps, very few, where, where you know that situation is different. Greece, maybe. Um, but basically, you want to win your side and then move on to the other, see what your team needs. Uh, so here we are on the seaside. We are just DPMing this Bismarck. Uh, the AP on this boat is very, very good. If you have a broadside cruiser at medium to even long ranges, you want to be using that AP. I don't know what it is. We talked about it, yes, not yesterday, but in the Pensacola video about the you know the angles and the armors and things like that. I just feel like the the 203s, while they do a decent amount of damage, the 180s just do so well citadeling broadside targets. I, like I said, I'm not sure if it is just you know too much velocity or or, or what, but. I, you, you know, the the, P, the Petro has the most velocity in the game, and I feel like I don't get that many overpens. But anyway, overpens aside, armor aside, uh, the HE also on this thing is is brutal as well. So make sure you're utilizing your ammo choice. I, I like cruisers because cruisers, like we've mentioned so many times, are a true test of talent um, in this game. Now, certain cruisers like the Wooster and, and a few others, you'll see me play and just abuse. Uh, you know, it's it's... The, the Wooster, you just get behind an island and, and hold left trigger and then right trigger in, in half of the games. But a, a cruiser like the P-Bag here, it, it teaches you and, and it forces you to utilize all of the perks and, and abilities and tactics in the game, right? Island cover, angling, AP, broadsides, HE, ammo selection, torpedoes, hydro, radar, pretty much everything you need to, to be a good cruiser, you know, and a good cruiser player is on this ship. But also, if you don't know how to play cruisers, you will not do well in this ship. Now, that being said, I've had a few games where I just didn't get the DPM and the fires to go my way. Uh, like, you won't be setting, you know, uh, massive damage numbers in this ship, but you can be highly impacting the game as our Brandenburg gets a nice skill issue on that uh, Northern Dragon, and he returns the favor with some deep water torps. You gotta love destroyer players who just YOLO the battleship and, 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 
immediately, you know, ruin any advantage their team had. Uh, but if you're looking at this game right now, you're thinking, wow, this is an early game. This game turns out to be a lot closer than it should have been. We have this Suzuya cutting out here, and we have these two battleships chasing it. Now, in their defense, this is not a full chase, but as soon as you go beyond the cap, you need to stop chasing kites. That is how you lose games. For example, our team at A, while it is not weak, it is certainly not strong. And what we mean by that is the number of ships, right? For example, if you calculate the ships, we've got four ships at sea here and only one for them. I guess you could count the, the Kudos off there, but he's more at Bravo. And, and this, this Suzuya is doing his job and, and drawing these ships out and kiting, right? He is able to angle away. He is able to utilize his HE. And these battleships are very ineffective. They have slow reloads and things like that. So if you find yourself doing that, don't, because it is a losing play. I hear battleship mains complain all the time about HE spammers. Well, don't chase them, right? L allow them to push into you. You did your job of getting the cap here, so why would you chase that ship off into oblivion? I just see so many, I think it was Cranky last night, and Cranky is a little more on the not PG rated side, which is, you know, which is fine. I respect the guy, but he was talking about this game is not rocket science and it's not, it's, it's, it's fairly common sense. Now you get into some of the more advanced plays and things like that. And, and it, it can become complicated. There's, there's a lot to think about. And this game is not easy as Habif gets a nice touch on the, uh, the Kudos off there for the finishing kill, which does help me out because now I am able to turn and angle against this Bismarck. I do believe I make a little bit of a, a noob play here that Palmer dies due to the fire of the Kuznetsov and the, uh, uh, Suzuya there, and I turned broadside to this Bismarck. Uh, that that mines was out there distracting the Bismarck, but because the mines just died, and now we're down, right? We're down, we're down ship. Uh, we do have a destroyer, which is a huge advantage, but because of that mines dying, I had to. T I was turning broadside, and now I am caught broadside between three ships. So basically, what I have to do in this situation is just focus the Bismarck. This gas cone, I think, goes AFK around this time, so we're lucky that he did not come out. Uh, although I can very easily angle against a Gascone, and it does not have the best accuracy. So basically, in this situation, I want to give broadside to the Suzuya. Why? Because the Suzuya cannot hurt me as bad as a Bismarck can, right? The Bismarck can certainly hurt me, and and I'm more likely probably to get overpenned by the Bismarck than to you know than to get overpenned by a Suzuya. But uh, we want to basically isolate our targets, right? Uh, we're, we're shooting this Bismarck here. We're trying to, you know, slightly dodge this Suzuya. And the other battleship out on the flank actually does do a decent job of, of helping us out with that Suzuya. So we weren't completely alone. We did have a beef there in the middle as well. And I think we uh, actually, yeah, we missed that kill there. But uh, we get another salvo off and we are starting our Kraken run. So, but because of position and, and just understanding and reading the game, we have now put our team in a huge advantageous position. Uh, that battleship over there, you can see, is probably going to die uh, at A, but he did his job, right? He held off the weak side and gave our team a chance. And sometimes that's all you can do. It is very frustrating uh, playing this game and, and seeing these situations develop and your team just fall right into them, right? But sometimes all you can do is, is just do the best you can. Your team is going to throw no matter what. Here, though, we are looking to get the crossfires on the Palmern and that Charles Martel, as well as push this Gascone. We know that this Gascone can overmatch us, but he is, in 99.9% .9 of cases, not going to dev strike us at this given health. We will lose a bit of health, but at that point, we can kite out. We have a destroyer alive, which is our advantage. I, it is you know very frustrating seeing uh, battleship players be useless, but what is even more frustrating is seeing destroyer players be useless. In this situation, now I know Habif. Habif is a you know an excellent player. He is not going to make this mistake, but I have seen it so many times where destroyer players have this advantage, and for some reason they want to get their torpedoes on target at three kilometers. Um, now here, I'm, I'm realizing that this Gascon is most likely AFK. He hasn't moved in the last couple minutes here. Like I said, he probably lagged out or what have you. It, it's, it happens to everyone. You know, if your kid falls, you know, in the middle of the game, you got to go. It, it's a video game. But um, it, is, <laughs> it is sometimes frustrating when it always seems to be your destroyer player at the beginning of the match. But Basically, I think, uh, you know, there needs to be like on-screen hints like, hey, you're in a destroyer, don't don't die uh, at the end of the game. 
experienced a little bit of, of screen input lag, but we're going to go ahead and increase Aaron's torpedo accuracy. This Palmer actually got a good shot on me, but because we were paying attention, utilizing overview camera, and a quick little side note, I love you, Peak, I do. Uh, overview camera does not increase accuracy. Uh, I just use overview camera because I can see, look, I can see the salvos from the Palmer and the Charles Martel. Now, I'm not worried necessarily about the salvos from the Charles Martel, but you can utilize even without an agile build, I know. Don't tell, don't tell the don't tell some of the people out there. Without even without an agile build, you can utilize your rudder uh, in this situation to simply dodge salvos at medium to long ranges. We have dodged, I think, every shell with the base rudder on a Russian cruiser. So, you know, specking everything into your rudder while you are more than welcome to do it, it it's it's sometimes truly a waste. Here, I, I was like, hey, Habif, I'm going on three. Uh, can we get the kill on this guy? We finish the uh, Palmer in there. And no, I, I don't think I told Habif that. But I was like, now I, I think I remember I said, Habif, if you take my Kraken, uh, I will report you to the uh, Bacon Agency in Canada. So I think Habif is from Canada. <laughs> what is it? The the BFI or the B, BIA? The BIA Bacon? I don't know. I'm making up terms here. But here, we're just going to go ahead and push in. At this point, uh, even if I trade with the Charles Martel, it is a win. But we've done a fantastic job. Of, look, 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 just look at our medals, right? Two tour pits, again, on an AFK player. So we'll be quiet about that. But 11 defends, 12 fires, 4 kills. We are, and, and we have over half of our health. On top of that, I was not hiding behind an island for most of the game. I did utilize different islands um, throughout the game. But we tanked damage, we dodged incoming damage, and just, you know, used our skill as a cruiser captain uh, and, and utilized the ship to its fullest ability, in my opinion. I was telling the... <laughs> I was like, uh, Odin, you better get back. So, I, you know, I'll actually give that Odin a little bit of credit. He did help us uh, defend against that Suzuya. But we, we round the corner here, and good night. Thanks for playing. Three Citadels there, and that is what we're talking about on Broadside Cruisers. Citadels uh, to the, you know... AP to the Citadels there, and no, kill number five for the Kraken. A nice little 3,000 base XP. A shout out to Arisalu and, of course, Habif uh, there. Anytime you get above 2,000 XP, you're, you're doing your job. Uh, but that is the video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Coots Nets off and the kind of buffed P bag here. We actually have another six kill game with the P bag on the horizon. This is kind of the week of Krakens. We got one with the Lepanto last night, so I'll be throwing that video up. Uh, shortly that was actually a pretty good game and solo nonetheless yes i know i know um but uh yeah guys the pea bag is, is a decent ship it's a decent ship in the right hands another kraken video uh, i just wanted to put out this week of krakens but i also want to put a little disclaimer krakens do not make or break your game if i were to get four kills the game would have still been the, the same in terms of the principles of the game which is what i try to preach you know the principles of the game so i can help out the general player base I know this video is going to maybe 1% of the players, but uh, I hope that it helps a few of you. Let me know if it does in the comments down below. And here is our full build. Uh, we do run refill station. If you're solo, maybe fully packed for that extra radar. But uh, talking about the, the perceptive type perk or the twist and track type perk, if you're near a cap and you range the cap, you just look at the edge of the cap, you can, you can basically tell where the destroyers are. So if you get that cap, the destroyer has to go into the cap, then you can utilize your radar. You don't need that twist and track perk. Now I do run it on a lot of other ships. I think it is a good perk to run, but just for this specific build, we are running fire uh, and, and more DPM. But that is the video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Have a great day. Hey, you run out. Peace.